Hi, I'm very excited to share with you lesson three of our Python for Anxious Artists series. In this video, we will be covering some basics on numbers, as well as a introduction to variables. And finally, we will be briefly introducing some inbuilt functions and talking a little bit about what functions are. Hi, if you're joining me for the first time, my name is Nelson Lim. I'm a professional VFX artist as well as educator. In this channel, I help other CG practitioners create more, earn more, and live more. If you like the thought of that, remember to subscribe and hit the bell uh, so that you get notified whenever there's new content that's being posted out there. So for the next couple of videos, we will be covering some key concepts that we will use to lay a foundation that we can build upon and eventually start building some simple applications. Without further ado, let's jump into this week's video. The best way to learn programming is to follow along and practice. This is not a skill you can pick up simply by listening or watching this video. Like I said in previous lessons, this isn't unlike learning to draw, sculpt, or even model. You will need to practice. And this trains your muscle memory and reinforces your learning through mistakes that you will surely make as a beginner. You can choose to listen to this video once through and come back again to practice, or you can simply listen pause the video and follow along at each segment of this video. I already have my command prompt on my terminal started up. You can start the interactive Python interpreter by typing Python. Press enter and the triple carrots will tell you that you are in the Python interpreter. I often keep an interactive Python terminal around handy to run tests when I'm coding. So I'd like to introduce you at the beginning of our Python series to the interactive Python interpreter. We will spend a fair bit of time here uh, learning some basics and concepts, uh, frameworks around Python that will help us when we move into developing slightly more complex applications. Please refer to previous lessons on how to install and set up your Python environment if you haven't got your Python environment installed and set up. One of the easiest ways to learn Python or to use Python is to basically use it as a glorified calculator. While that may not seem to have a lot of day-to-day -day use, I've actually used that a fair bit. When I'm in a bind, I couldn't find a calculator, I've launched my Python interpreter and used it as a calculator. But the concept here is I want to introduce you to the basic arithmetic math operations uh, that Python has. So let's go ahead and do one plus one. That's our addition. We should expect two. How about three minus five? We expect minus two. So Python also supports negative numbers. Two divided by four. 0.5 and 4 times 3 will give us 12. The next thing we'll talk about is order of operations. So in this statement 2 plus 4 multiply by 2. Python's order of operations always begins from left to right. However, multiplications and divisions run before additions and subtraction. So based on that, Multiplic the multiplication operation will run first. So 4 times 2 will give me 8, and then 2 plus 8 will give me 10. So I expect the result to return 10. And that's exactly what it returns. Just like with any other mathematical operation, our brackets will run before multiplications and divisions. So if I wanted the addition of 2 plus 4 to run first, then I would go ahead and type 2 plus 4, close bracket, multiplied by 2. So now I know that 2 plus 4 will run first because it's within those brackets. So I would get 6. 
and then 6 multiplied by 2 should give me 12. So I expect the result here now to return 12. And that's exactly what we've got. So I've introduced you to basic arithmetic and order of operations. And so this is a very basic understanding that you need to have about Python and programming. And it's very basic math before we carry on. To help us create more complex programs, we need a way to store information that we can tell the computer to revisit at a later point in time. To do this, we use the help of variable. A variable is like an imaginary container where the computer stores some information away. So in this case, I might want to store away this data of Mike. To help us, we need to label the container. So let's label this container, uh, you know, give it a sensible name. In this case, I'm going to call it first underscore name. I'm going to store Mike into my variable labeled first name. If you ever try to find something in a garage filled with unlabeled or mislabeled boxes, you will understand why it's important to give these variables a sensible label. The first name holds what we call a string data. And the string data here is just a collection of characters. In this case, it's a collection of capital M and then lowercase i, k, and e. Each variable container holds a specific type of data or information. In this case, it's a string. So let's create some variables now. Here's how easy it is to create variables in Python. First up, we'll name our variable. In this case, I'll name it first name. And then we will assign some value, some data to our variable. And we assign a value to a variable using the equals operator. And let's assign the string mic to it. Hit enter, and there you go. You have your first variable. We can also assign integers to variables, or we can assign decimal point numbers to integers. And we can even do additions while we are assigning these values to the variables. The result of 32.5 plus 75.5 is going to be stored inside of speed. So let's check the data type of our variable. We can use a nifty function called type. Type first name returns us class stir. Stir is just short for string. Let's do the same for age. And it tells us int, which is short for integer. Type speed, float. So we see three different variable types being returned uh, as we feed the type function these individual variables. Python creates the right variable types for us automatically. And again, if you want to impress your software engineering friends, this is called dynamic typing. In this example, we used a type function to help us. The type function is an inbuilt function that returns the type of data we provide inside those brackets. A function is a block of code that is packaged up and named nicely. It runs when it is called. You can send some data which are called arguments. In this case, we sent age, speed, and first name as arguments into our type function and our type function can return some sort of data as a result too. In this case, it returns the type. I love functions because it's a very useful way for us to reuse code and type less. Finally, it makes our code much more readable. I hope you are getting by now that many concepts invented in programming is about making code easier to read, use, and maintain. In future lessons, we will dive deeper and create our own custom functions to leverage the power of functions. Finally, from this example, we discover a new data type called float. Float is a data that contains decimal points. While humans look at numbers as 
numbers. It's important to know that computers make a distinction between numbers with decimals and numbers without decimals. You will see this distinction between float and integers many times in this series and in all programming languages. So question of the day, what are you guys learning and challenging yourselves lately? Please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what you are doing to level up your artist journey.